Hi friends, welcome. This is going to be another excerpt from a conversation that I had with my friend Michael, also known as Kidox on Instagram. He is a New York City based photographer and we spoke about what makes New York City just so special for street photography. Enjoy. Okay, so it was pouring out. Okay. It was raining like crazy. I know like the the camera can get wet, right? Mm -hmm. but my camera was getting really really wet and <laughs> I was just walking around I knew I knew it was gonna start raining that day so I was like let me go take the camera out mm -hmm. and let me go shoot New York City while it's raining because I feel like that's when more people are like don't really care about that they're getting their photo taken they're just worried about not getting wet and yeah. like not getting in the way of everybody else's umbrella yeah well so and I've learned that in New York City it's, it's unique because everybody since everybody walks everywhere there's a lot more umbrellas and umbrellas are fantastic for street photography. Yes. And so I, the, like, this was definitely one of the spots I wanted to go to while, while, when I was shooting it that day. Mm -hmm. And I went, I mean, I was just in this corner and I was just standing there waiting for people to walk by, like the right subject to walk by. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you like look at my feed, there's some other photos of the same exact spot. Mm hmm and I guess like this was one of them. I was just more paying attention to like getting the shot. And then like when I got home, imported everything. And then like I saw this image, I was like, whoa, how, 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 how did this like? <laughs> oh, I love it when that happens. <laughs> whoa, what? what? How you did, think, it's, it especially when you think you didn't, you didn't get anything at all. And then you go back and you, you realize you got a banger. Yeah, no, I, I definitely was here for like a couple, maybe like a good half hour. Just mm. shooting people who would come by. Uh, sometimes it'd be like in groups of three, groups of four. Sometimes it'd be like ten people at once just walking by the sh by the frame, and then like it was just like this guy just by himself, and then boom, I just snapped the photo. In this photo, the guy has a a very neutral look on his face, mm -hmm. and you captured him in an authentic moment, and that's what I love about great street photos that involve people, is you have people unsuspecting. Uh, they're not being inflicted by the camera. They're not changing for the camera. They're just kind of there. And especially in New York City, there's so many people walking around that it's really hard to be noticed in comparison to other places I've tried to take photos. Yeah. Like I grabbed a couple of really fantastic photos on subway cars the last time mm -hmm. um, when, when I just, you know, oh, just went there. Yeah. It, the one with the girl holding the book or the yeah, magazine? Yeah. That, oh, that's that one was... of them. That was awesome. Thank you. I love that one. Thank you. No, that one was yeah, yeah. that one was beautifully serendipitous, and she never noticed me. And that's wow. one thing. That's one thing I love about New York City is yeah. like you can be you can be you know twenty feet away from somebody, and they may never look and see you. Um, but I've also developed an ability to not be noticed over time <laughs> because I yeah. I as much as like I will sometimes get photos that are pretty close to people and where I would be pretty noticeable, but I don't like to be noticed. It's, mm -hmm. it's yeah, not a particularly comfortable experience for me. I used to think that I had to be noticed or that I had to push myself until, um, until I was in a position where I could overcome that fear of being noticed that I had to like jump out of bushes with flashes on my camera <laughs> yeah. and to take photos in front of people or else I wasn't like a real street photographer. But then I learned, it's okay to kind of hide in the shadows, like. And yeah, you you could definitely get shots, good good photos, like hiding far away or just right. staying more further, like not being in, like in front of them. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. in their face. Like there's definitely ways you could capture the moment mm -hmm. at a distance. And there's there is value to not interrupting the flow of reality as yeah. well. Okay, we're gonna move on to the next photo. Uh, we have one of a subway train either coming towards us or going away from us. Very shadowy, moody, orange scene. Mm -hmm. We have the, what is that? The T train, J7? Seven, seven train. Seven yeah. train. This photo, like uh, many of your photos, tend to be more about a mood than a thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that's interesting to me about what you do. Is that an intentional effort? Or are you saying to yourself, I'm going to take a photo of this train? Or is it more like, I like the way everything feels and I want to capture this energy for people? Yes. He nods his head in enthusiastic agreement. It is not about the train here. Okay. Like, honestly, for me, it's it's not about the train. For me, it's more even more about like the cityscape in the back with like the sunset and all that stuff. Like I feel like I know it's all the way in the back, but like 
I feel like that's like the subject. Everybody knows the skyline of New York and like and that that long skinny tall building yeah the the pencil building uh, yeah like so like i feel like that was mainly my like intention is to shoot like the the overall like vibe of the like the scene do you feel like you connect with new york on a deeper level in a way that helps you um experience that first and then convey that to people well growing up here like it's i'm like so used to new york Mm. And, like, I know a lot of people really love this place and, like, are yeah. have, like, some, like, dream of coming here. Or, like, there's some, like, strong emotional tie mm. with New York City. I don't, I don't want to say it, but, like, I feel, like, kind of desensitized from that. Mm. But, like, most of these times, like, just because I was, I grew up here. Like, I grew up here and, like, I see the skyline every day and probably see a building every day. A lot of people, like, really hold a sentimental value to this place. Mm-hmm. And want to come here because this is like the heart of like the world i guess like Mm -hmm. the center of the world ish Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah no it's interesting to me that two things that that i notice about what you just said one is that you said you're desensitized to it which i would expect like i I think a lot of people when they grow up in a place they have a really hard time holding on to the magic of that place and two i think it's very interesting that you're empathetic to the way that other people see New York City because you're absolutely and also that you decide to communicate that in your photos intentionally when I come to New York City I feel that energy aggressively I tell people when I describe what New York City is like I tell people it's like as somebody who's trying to uh, discipline themselves work really hard and create success I tell somebody it's like when I go to New York City I drink jet fuel and then I come back to my normal life and then operate on that jet fuel. And it's like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's something that feel fills me with energy. Uh, there's so many, there's, there's something about everybody running around. They're all trying to get to a place. There's so many creative activities going on. There's, there's meetings. Um, I think if you go there for like, just tourism reasons you may not tap into this so much but Mm -hmm. for me it it's very much a center of the of the world like you just said i think that's a great way to put it yeah it's a center of the world for creative folks who are trying to work really hard to create success in their lives and so when i go to new york it's like a reverse vacation it's like (laughs) i go there not to relax i go there to take in the vibes Mm -hmm. and then bring those vibes back with me Mm-hmm. And I think it's so fascinating that you still see that, even though you said you you struggle to to maintain a that that feeling, you still see that and you still want to communicate that to people. And whenever I go there, I, when I go to New York City, I repeatedly have situations where I'm like, why am I here and how am I here? Like, how did I end up here? I'm like in this. I'm in a beautiful office, or I'm in you know I'm in this really bizarre cultured part of town. And that's part of the care. I love the character of New York City. That's the thing that that really stands out to me. I think that's the the other than the jet fuel thing. That's the the strong presence that I feel is a sense of character when you go into the subways, when you're in Manhattan, when you're in Queens, when you're in Brooklyn, uh, when you go Midtown. Mm-hmm. Every block is different. It's amazing. Thanks for watching. I hope this video made you feel feelings that are new. Uh, Like I said, the full conversation can be found at the James Red Podcast. Have a lovely day.